Sweet. Well, this is great because I don't have to prepare at all. <laughs> I didn't know if you were going to have questions that you wanted me to ask you. No, I, we haven't talked about it, so we'll see how you do. <laughs> this is so weird. I'm used to you grilling me or uh, taking the lead. What's your favorite part about programming? Oh, geez, we're getting right into it here. What's your favorite thing? No fluff at all. No. Nope. Most shows small talk at least a little bit before they get into it. How you doing, Ben? How's life? <laughs> Great. Things are good. <laughs> What's the question? <laughs> What's your favorite part about programming? Do you have a favorite type of athlete that you like to program for? Well, I feel like those are two different questions. They are. We'll just lump them right into one. I I like writing for people who do their programming. That's do it's a good start. Do you get a lot it. of people that don't? No. But or people who end up modifying quite a bit of stuff or like having to change it or like that is what it is. Like sometimes people are just either busy or they have uh like stuff going on that they gotta navigate with like joint stuff or other things. But yeah. when you don't have any of that stuff, it's really nice and you just put, get to push the person, which is always fun. Yeah. Um, so that's nice. If I had my, my wish, everybody would be healthy all the time and everybody would have an infinite amount of time to train and just do that all the time. I always felt like if I didn't do something that was, um, that was programmed or if I did it wrong, I'm like, oh man, I just wasted his time. <laughs> 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 he took all this like in, in my mind he took all this time to write something for me and I didn't I either did it wrong or I couldn't there's not very many times that I can't do it but if I can't I'm like I feel like I wasted your time do you ever feel like that so honestly I mean there are times where like whatever it was is no longer applicable and that's I mean essentially it's a wasted effort like if someone does get injured, it's like, you're not just going to, I mean, you know, they, they do something to their knee. It's like, you're not going to do their back squat progression that you build out. So right. you scrap it and you start over like COVID everybody got shut down. It was like, well, okay. Now we have to refigure out who's got what equipment at home and restart everybody on a new cycle of some kind because all of a sudden all the the weights got taken away essentially for most people oh, yeah man i didn't even i wasn't with you then so yeah that had to be frustrating it was yeah yeah did you have anybody just quit probably i don't not not that i remember that was like up front like they got shut down there's no because but like certainly people fell out of practice a little bit more during that time yeah but I don't think like directly, like since I can't go to the gym, I'm not hiring you as my coach anymore. I don't think so. Oh, that's good. <laughs>
it's like fun 2.0 a little bit. Like this was a really fun challenge, which is a different kind of fun. Mm -hmm. So I do think about trying to incorporate as much variety as reasonable. Um, and like, for example, you could make a, a back squat progression that is very good at like increasing people's one rep maxes. Mm -hmm. That is very boring to do. And I give those a lot to <laughs> row clients who like their, their only goal is to like get better. Mm -hmm. Like, and to a certain extent, I understand that like if people want to get better in classes, like they are going to have to do at least some stuff that is like relatively vanilla, pretty boring, just like, you know, going in and check it off. And it's going to be something that's necessary for you to do. Like, you know, that's, that's life. It's also fitness. Like you're going to have to do stuff that you don't want to do if you want to get the results that you want to get out of something. Sure. And I think people get that, but at the same time, I don't need to beat them over the head with that. So there's stuff that you can do where it's like, you know, you can sprinkle in little bits of things that are like a little bit of more variety where if it's just like, again, it could be as simple as like, okay, we want to hit squats every week. And even if we're doing back squats, but we could like do things where we're changing tempo or doing it in maybe an interval setting or something where it's like, you can still get a pretty good stimulus. And for the average person who's at an affiliate, they're still going to improve enough. And yet it's a little bit varied and different, but I do want to go back to like what you said about like, I feel like a lot of affiliate owners have like this need, like feel an urge to like push like competitive type, like goals onto clients, mm. onto like their members. And I feel like, I mean, frankly, I feel like those people haven't really worked with anybody who's like an actual athlete. Like who's at like a, like a high level athlete, right. I should say, yeah. right? Like if you've worked with a high level athlete, you understand that like what that person's goals are and what drives them and what they need is like so different from like your average member. Absolutely. And not that like you're not trying to improve them both, but you can have way more fun, way more variety and give them more like traditional CrossFit stuff and they're still gonna see pretty good progress and be able to enjoy it more. Then just like, you know, again, for the, someone who has, uh, you know, they've been doing CrossFit for a decade, they're pretty high level. Like if you give them like random doses of squats once a week, they're, they're not going to get their squats stronger. Right. <laughs> Whereas like yeah. most of the members in here, like we could literally want to run a one day per week progression for like squatting. And even if it's not super linear, they'll probably get way better. Yeah. Like we actually just did that. It was like two thirds of the people in our classes, like PR the back squat. Mm -hmm. I was like, Whoa, yeah, was that good. blew my mind a little bit. It was good. Yeah. They stayed really focused and on track with it, but you know, it's, you know, the fun thing, it's like most of our members are never going to compete. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and I think that forcing that onto people is, is a big turnoff. You know, they're coming in here for an hour a day and it's their time to do something for them where they just want to get better. So I think forcing that is, it's kind of a bad idea. Yeah. Like the way I see it, like if people want to be competitive, like either in a class where they're just like going head to head with other people in yeah, class that's and like they want need. to compare to scores and like be bros or whatever, like yeah. that's enough com competition for a lot of people. Other people that don't even care about their score, they're just like, hey, give me a smiley face at the end of class. I like, yeah. on the board. Like I really don't care. <laughs> I didn't keep track. I have no idea what my score was. Yeah. And they have like yeah. no clue like what the metrics are either. Like when we mm -hmm. first opened... And I had done this in a lot in the protocol too. It was like, I would write a lot of scales like, okay, 70% of, you know, your clean and jerk is like the cap of this Metcon, like use 135, 95 or 70% of your clean and jerk or something. Yeah. Right. Um, and then it's like, well, a lot of newer people have no idea what their clean and jerk max is. Or if you ask them to do it today, they could probably lift more than they ever have. Mm -hmm. And they operate like that bar is relatively light so they can move it well. So like that, that scale doesn't really work super great. But then also like a lot of people just have no clue. Like they're like, I don't know what my clean jerk yeah. max is coach. I'm like, okay. <laughs> like that, that kind of blows my mind a little bit, but yeah. You should probably read the blog I just wrote. Yeah. <laughs> got to track it people. You got to track it. And I feel like people are like, part of it is too like, the first couple of exposures you have of moving, you're just trying to like keep your head above water, like you're treading sure. to try to figure out the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And like, especially in a class environment, you're like, you don't want to feel like embarrassed and like 
there's a lot of stuff going on besides just like learning, oh, what my clearing jerk max is. Like, I don't know what a hang clean is, coach. Like, what's a hang? Yeah. They still don't know all the names. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of like that sort of stuff that I think some of that's just being a newer affiliate. Like we have more people who haven't, you know, been at our, our facility for five years because we haven't been open for five years. Mm. Um, but I think to a certain degree, you're always going to gonna have that. So you just got to be patient and understanding that people are relatively new to things and that's totally fine. Yeah, for sure. What would you never program for a class setting? Is there anything you would never program? I have exercises that I just don't like. For people or for you? Like, like stuff that like HQ pushes that I'm like, this is stupid. Like... <laughs> Like I've read a lot of, like, <laughs> since Bosman's taken over, and we kind of realized that, like, uh, he's doing a lot more, like, kind of, like, frankly, like cheesy kind of fitness stuff. Like, why would there be V ups in the quarterfinals? Not that sure. V ups necessarily are cheesy, but there's they they become cheesy when you try to race them, which is what you do in quarterfinals. Sure. So, like, prior to that actually being in quarterfinals, that would be like a movement that like I probably wouldn't program. Like. <laughs> like for myself as an athlete, like I hadn't done ab mat sit ups since being at an affiliate. Like it had been like three years since I had done an ab mat sit up. I program those, right? But like, and I've also programmed V ups. But there are certain movements that I'm just like, ah, this isn't great. Like I don't really love med ball cleans. Like that's that's oh, one yeah. where I'm like, I actually had that programmed in a workout for Lumber Capital like two weeks ago, and I was like, this is so stupid. I'm just picturing people bicep curling and like squatting <laughs> well, that's under what happens, it yeah. and then standing up. And it's, it's really like, hard to teach. They You do it at your L1 and it's yeah. like, it's. And I was like. It's kind of a nightmare. I was like, this is, this is just going to be a cheesy workout. And I scrapped <laughs> it and I just got rid of it. Yeah. Um, like sumo deadlift high pulls, pulls with like a bar. Like oh. this is another one that's L1 and it's like. It's L I love those, but it, it is, yeah, it's L1. Yeah. And it's like, again, I might program those at some point, but it's not going to be like a, a staple in the programming. Um, so why, what do you not like about the movement? It's just like, for the, for the general public, just, I just don't really get the point, okay. frankly. <laughs> it's well, like they, like how often do you sumo deadlift? Like I've, right. I don't think I've ever sumo deadlift in a class setting mm -hmm. at a gym. No. And it's like, that's fine. I mean, I think most people are starting to deadlift conventionals hard enough, but, uh, so it's like. Why are we doing a sumo deadlift high pool then? If you're teaching conventional deadlift, why do we use some deadlift high pools? Why not clean high pools? Yeah, it's fair. And I don't even do clean high pools really in class. No. Because it's like, let's just learn how to clean correctly. So you're not like, you don't have the mindset where, you know, people saw, like when wall walks were in the open for the first year, lots of gyms were programming them immediately because they're like oh this is the next movement and there were also gyms that were like we're not doing those they're stupid everybody hated them and then they got stuck because they were programmed again yeah so it's not like if you see it in the open then you immediately jump on the on the programming train with it or i think it again i think that's the difference between competitors programming and competitive like programming for a gym where like most of the people have like general fitness goals is that if you're a competitor you have to be ready for whatever could come out. Sure. And if something has come in, out in the past, we know it's more likely to show up again. Like wall walks were in three opens in a row and then never had they been in an open before. If you were like, well, this was a COVID year and it was stupid, cheesy fitness and we're never going to do wall walks. And it's like, if you're a competitive athlete, you're at a huge disadvantage because you just were asked to do it two years consecutively after right. that in the open as well. Yeah. And it's like, that matters a lot if you're a competitive athlete. Like, who cares if you can do a wall walk or not if you're a non-competitive athlete? It's like... Well, I mean, I, guess, I mean, I agree and I don't. I think that a lot of the, the community inside the gym, the more they know about the Open, they want to do well. Yeah. So why would you not program something from the Open for class? Yeah. And, and again, this is where it's like a gray area because it's like you... If, if you know like a good chunk of your population is going to be doing open workouts because you're going to do it as an affiliate, mm -hmm. then you, to a degree you have to prepare them enough to be able to do the workouts without like getting injured. So you right. can't like stray so much from like traditional CrossFit programming or like open style testers that you never do that stuff because if they're asked to do, 
you know, like for example, if you never program muscle ups, like, okay, majority of your people in your classes are never going to do a muscle up. But if you never program them, like you, even the people that can get to like the point in like a, a 23.1 where they they get to the muscle ups, they're probably not going to go well at all. When there's like opening them up for risk of injury, there's like a right. lot of other stuff. Like, for example, if you've never done double unders, well, maybe double unders is a bad example because you're not going to injure yourself doing double unders probably. But like if you were doing like a bunch of box jumps, for example, and like uh, t I want to say 22 one, uh, wall walk, dumbbell snatch, box jump over that one. Oh, yeah. And that one you had to step down. So maybe there's not as much of a risk of injury there. But like the, the old uh, open workout where it was like deadlift box jump. Like if you hadn't done like – you know, 50 plus fairly heavy deadlifts and workout combined with box jumps before, and you're doing all that rebounding. Yeah. Um, and people could rebound those. It's like, man, that's really open yourself up for issues. So I just kind of think you have to be aware. And if you are planning to do that as an affiliate, then like gear up for it a little bit. I think it's the same thing for Murph. Like it would be irresponsible as a gym to do zero Murph prep and be like, Hey, we're having an event that's Murph. It's like, that's a really bad idea. Like people are going to, you know, get yeah. heat stroke or yeah. rhabdo and or something like I just a bad idea. Yeah. And, you know, I see a lot of, well, I guess I shouldn't say a lot, but right around the Murph time, you know, I see a lot of posts from other gyms like you shouldn't need to do Murph prep. So you don't feel that way. Yeah. I mean, I would disagree. I mean... I do too. I think that it's a lot of volume for people that have, if they've never done that yeah. type of volume. Unless you're making everyone scale. Yeah. And at that point, it's not Murph anymore. Right. Like the essence of that workout is really that like you, you do the whole thing. Like that's sort of the idea behind hero workouts like that. Yeah. And people want to do the whole thing. You know, when yeah. you throw the, the idea of scaling it, they're like, but what, and I'm not really doing it. So. Yeah. That's a fair argument. Yeah. They want to, like, they want to feel a part of the. Like if you're going to do it, movement. you might as well do it right. Which is yeah. sort of like, even if it's not Rx, so to speak. Like if you do ring rows and band assisted push ups, you know, that's totally fine. Sure. But like it's still a lot of contractions, so you just gotta be I mean, preparing for it. At least to your degree. Like you can still be a little bit messed up, but like don't make it such a huge risk. Yeah. So how do you feel about the whole program for the best, scale for the rest? Do you think that you know, it's like you said if you never program muscle ups, but somebody has one or two and they're not one of your um, individual design clients, how do you, how do you help them get better? Yeah. It's, that's honestly a challenge. I think, I think different gyms have different like base level kind of uh, average class goer. And I feel like our population here is very average, right? Mm. Uh, we're like, again, we've, you know, m at best a handful of people who are, you know, doing muscle ups if they come up and work out. Sure. And like, again, I have no problem with that. However, I do think it's generally helpful if like you're trying to elevate the level, like the baseline level of skill and strength in the population as a whole. But I don't think that just means like doing like high level stuff every day and then like having everybody scale every day. Right. So I wouldn't say like write for the best and then scale for the rest. I would say like try to, again, give, give a good number of movements of the higher, higher skill relative to maybe like an open level where like, again, we're not seeing like, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, back, back pullovers or butterfly ring muscle ups in the open. So it's like, you don't need to program those. It's like, right. again, if you, if that's sort of like your baseline and I, I'm not saying that open should be the measuring stick for everything. But again, if you're a gym who is across the affiliate and you are going to be doing the open, that's not a bad like benchmark to at least start to standardize to. So it's like, okay, like maybe our higher level stuff is like handstand walking and like muscle ups. It's like, okay, maybe we can throw in legless rope climbs and, you know, a certain, you know, kind of idea of like what is relatively strong for like bench, squat, deadlift, snatch, clean and jerk. And then you can start to like build off, you know, more repeatable work underneath that. So it's like, 
I kind of think about it as like maybe programming towards like the top quartile and then scaling for the rest where it's like, I don't think, I think if everyone's scaling, then it's just like, why are you even writing it like that? Like right. if you've literally have like one person who can do it, it's just like, you just tell that person to like, okay, you know, use a 30 pound wall ball today to get the sure. desired stimulus that I'm looking for. As, yeah. As or give them the option to, I, mean, I guess, scale up, you know? Yeah. Um, and I also think like people get in a trap of like wanting to do that all the time. And it's like, you don't need to. We had ring rows <laughs> the other day, and it was like, that was the RX, and there was no yeah. RX plus. Like, you yeah. did the ring rows. Yeah. A few people were like, really? Just ring rows? Yep. Just ring rows. Yeah. So, Just. like, I think that can be a trap, too, is, like, people always want to RX or RX plus when it's not appropriate for them yet. It's right. like, there's fine if you get bottlenecked sometimes by by a skill or a strength element where it slows you down. You don't get, like, as good of a workout, so to speak. But that shouldn't be all the time. Like, there should be times where, like, you're still breathing really hard and, like, feeling like your muscular endurance or, like, your your heart rate, your breathing uh, is the thing that's slowing you down. Um, but, again, I think I think there should be a mix of both throughout a, a week. So how, as far as the cycles that you've been programming, they've been really, really awesome. Um, and everybody's been really enjoying the progression of them. Um, nobody's been bored. Um, everybody's PRing and, and seeing progress. How do you decide based on the current cycle or the previous cycle, what the next one should look like? Do you, do you take a look at all at, you know, how people are doing and say, oh, they're not ready for this yet? Or what do you, how do you go about that? So honestly, I kind of have a rough idea of like the map of the year for our affiliate. Mm. So I have it planned out through open of 2024 right now of like this year I'm currently doing eight week cycles. So I'll probably bring that back a little bit. I'll probably do like six week cycles for like next year. I think, I think eight's just a little bit long. Why? Um, Cause unless you're like really varied in how you like, so I, I build everything off a of skeleton. Mm. So like, for example, like right now we're doing like bench press or strict press on as like the strength on like Wednesday mm -hmm. and it's every Wednesday. That's what you get. And it's like, if it was like just bench press or for example, like last cycle, it was like Tuesdays we were doing a rope, uh, like a Metcon that had rope climbs in it every single Tuesday. There were definitely people who were like, I'm sick of doing rope pull to stance cause that's my scale and doing that yeah. every Tuesday for the last eight weeks. And so I think that's a fair complaint, <laughs> right? Like obviously like, that you have to give them enough time to get better at something. But at the same time, you could, there's kind of two ways. You can either make it more narrow and make it for like a shorter period of time where it's like, this is a very linear progression. We're only going to run it for like four or five weeks mm -hmm. where you could say, sort of like we are at this cycle, like you're probably going to bench at some point or strict press at some point on Wednesday. It could be either one of those two lifts or it could be like in a Metcon where it's a little bit more volume based and likely people haven't been benching or pressing that much where they're probably going to improve either way. But then if you run it for a longer period of time, that way it's not, it's like you're hitting the same thing consistently for those eight weeks, mm -hmm. but it's not like you're just doing the exact same progression with like just a few reps different right. or like just an, an extra set or something where it's like, this is really boring. I'm tired of doing this. So I think having that as sort of like your your shortest um like outlook like i know where this is for the next six to eight weeks and then i have a rough idea of what the priorities are going to be from you know late summer 2023 early fall late fall you know and basically every eight weeks from there and there's sort of like I would say I kind of anchor to, again, probably times of the season. Like we know that open's probably going to be like mid to late February, mm. 2024. Murph is like obviously on uh, Memorial Day. So you're looking almost like towards June. And then uh, for most people, it's like, okay, we're probably going to be outside way more, probably doing more running type stuff. Let's make sure they're ready to do that over the summer. And then it's like in as fall rolls around, it's a good – and. Oftentimes I'll say like, as people come off of like 
open, they realize that they have certain like strengths and weaknesses that they identify through that and they often want to get better or they're comparing themselves to other people. So they're like, okay, I want to get these skills. We need to get these strength levels back up. And typically like something like that, you're doing more conditioning based like met cons, like leading up to like, again, we're not prepping the average person for the open, but we're maybe, or maybe to do well in the open, but we're prepping them so they can handle participating in the open. Sure. So like naturally there's sort of like a, okay, let's take some time to sort of rebuild after that with like basic strength movements, which is often like power lifts uh, or stuff that's a little bit slower, a little bit more basic, like back to basics, more like off season mode. Again, I don't want to get too caught up in like language of like what I would say for like my athletes, but it does mirror that to a certain extent. Sure. And then as you come through the fall, like, okay, you probably tried to push up some of those absolute numbers and then we can try to transition that more to like Olympic lifting. And again, you're going to be doing all this year round because it, I think it is important to keep touches across the entire year round, especially for, well, especially for everyone, right? Because people are signing up for a CrossFit gym. They want to do CrossFit mm. and like your athletes, they need to prepare to, to do the sport. So it's like not, not for class programming, but like in, for my individual design clients, like that's another thing you just got to think about. It's like trying to keep a touch of that the entire year round. So, and then as you get into like the fall, again, you're going to start thinking about like open again and like holidays and stuff and like trying to keep people like, you know, fit and healthy and like in here over the holidays. Motivated. And that's like, okay, you're probably going to do a lot more stuff that's like erg based at that point because it's going to be cold out and nobody's going to do anything outside. And there's like a natural kind of flow to that year. And I don't think that really needs to change a lot like year over year, but you can get creative in like how you like kind of attack those priorities throughout the year. So it's sort of like this morph that happens throughout the, the calendar year, sort of yeah. like naturally for most people. Do you have a topic that you'd like to request as a future show or just a question about training? Reach out to me. My email is ben at zorfitness.com or you can DM me on Instagram at zorfitness. Lastly, head over to zorfitness.com if you want to browse all of our previous shows with in-depth show notes as well as educational content for all things training. Is there ever a time when you're you're looking at the class um, the classes that you programmed and the times and the you know who are X and who didn't? Is there any is there a time when you look at it and you're like, okay, this isn't working? Definitely not that it's like not working. When we first opened, I definitely had to recalibrate. How? Just because of all the, the new people? Uh I think to a degree. But I think more so I just have worked with, like, I think my baseline was shifted. Like, I think I expected too much of the, the average gym goer. Frankly. That's funny. I was actually, I was wondering what that would look like for you because you've, you've yeah. always programmed for, you know, people that are competitive and know what they're, know what they're doing. And, uh, we had a lot of, a lot of fresh people yeah. that didn't know what anything was. So I was wondering if that was going to be a challenge for you as far as programming. Yeah. I mean, I definitely think there was a learning curve for sure. Yeah. I mean, I think I'm, I mean, I'm always learning, but like, yeah, I think just like being able to see again, what, what the average person is going to be able to handle and like come back from and be able to keep showing up. Like, I don't want people to be ever so trashed. Like, I don't want to program like a Murph type workout in class, like on a regular week, because yeah. it's like, they're not going to show up for four days because they're going to be so sore. Right. And it's like, I don't want people to do that. I want them to just keep showing up and like getting the routine and showing up. And yes, they're going to be some stuff that's harder. We're going to push the envelope certain places, but like you can do that in a way that's way more calculated that people aren't going to be trashed from it mm -hmm. and it allows them to keep coming back. Um, so there has been stuff, some stuff where I was like, like, whoa, like this just took, you know, it was a partner workout and they're supposed to split the work. And I was like, okay, this took like 50% longer than I was expecting. <laughs> I, I can recall one of those. I was wondering if there's ever been like an oops time when you were like, uh, oops, I didn't yeah, expect definitely. it to go that way. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, I think luckily it's like, 
I mean, you're used to, you're like, you can probably look at a lot of your individual athletes and say, this is probably how long this is going to take. But again, yeah. those people have been working out But there's there for... too sometimes, right? Yeah. Like, I'd be lying if there's never <laughs> an oopsie. You had one this week. Was like, I did. I did. I got off the road and just didn't have any time to play into I was coach. like, I was why like, does oh. he want me to quit cross? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, okay, I missed that. I missed the vote on that one a little bit. It's fine. And like, that definitely happens, but like, yeah. One of this is like figuring out where people are at. And then figuring out appropriate scales and like communicating those. So like not giving the exact same variation every time. Yeah. Um, or s- simple as like sometimes people just need to scale the volume instead of scaling whatever it is. Like it's really easy to write something again, like, uh, you know, I don't, I think it's actually a bench work workout, but it's like Cindy rounds, but like a 30 minute EMOM. Mm-hmm. It's like one round of Cindy for 30 minutes or essentially, essentially it's like, there's going to be people where like you, they can do that and that's not very challenging. And then there's going to be another pe- people who would do it for the first two minutes. And then they're just like hyperventilating for the next 28. Um, and they're going to be trashed from doing that. And it's like, okay, like air, is air squat your easiest movement? It's like for a squat, if it is, then it's like, you just got to go back to volume at that point. Yeah. Like there's, an easy way to do that would be something like an AMRAP, right? Where it's like, if it's in, if it is Cindy, right? There's going to be some people who get 25 rounds and there's going to be other people who get 12. Yeah. And that's just because of the rate that they can move. But if you're writing task priority based work where it's like for time, like four rounds for time and you got, you know, 15 air squat, 15 ring row. And it's like, then that's your, your RX. Then there's going to be people who they just slug through that work and it takes them forever. So if you are going to program like more of those basic workouts, you just need to communicate that. Like it's if, when it's appropriate for people to, to scale volume, yeah. something like that. I think even teaching pace in the class environment with all the new people was interesting. Um, and even getting them to understand, Oh, I can scale the reps. It's like, well, yeah, if you're not up to that volume level yet, then absolutely scale the reps. But it was like we had some, I think it was probably through the Murph prep, um, 5.30 a.m. class, there were some people that were experienced. So they were, you know, really banging out their squats, push-ups, going really fast. And the people that didn't were like, is that how fast we're supposed to do this? Yeah. <laughs> so it's like teaching them just all of it. It's very interesting. The pacing thing has been super interesting to me because – Again, if you've been doing something long enough, like you look at a piece of work and you're like, you know what you should pace it yeah. based on how much is there, right? Yeah. And that's how you pace it. It's like, oh, I have to run five miles. Okay, my pace on five miles is going to be a whole lot slower than on 800 meters yeah. because five miles is a lot more work <laughs> than 800 meters. Yeah. I specifically remember it was like, I want to say like every three minutes for 10 sets, like a couple deadlifts, a couple swings, a couple cows and, or something like that on like an erg. And it was like supposed to be like maybe like 90 seconds of work. So it was about one to one work rest. And it was mm-hmm. like people went out so hard on that first oh, one. I, rem- I know exactly they, what you're talking about. They trashed themselves. And mm-hmm. it was like, you, you understood it was 10 sets of work, right? <laughs> like, why did you go so fast in the first yeah. one? Like, did you think you could recover from it in that 90 second period? Yeah. It's just I- like sometimes people, I don't even know if they think about it, to be honest. No. They just go. And that's the thing, you know, in the, in the class environment, we have, you know, all these, these guys and it's like, it's one guy goes super hard and all the other guys yeah. are like, I got to do that too. <laughs> I yeah. got to keep up with them. But the, the interesting thing was we actually, I reprogrammed that same workout like yep. three months later after we had gone through like, again, probably six or eight weeks of like different looks at that same sort of thing. Like, mm-hmm. I think we even use language around like wanting to be like a ramping effort where it was like you Start try to increase the, the calories on the urx each mm-hmm. time essentially in the work window that you had when we revisited it n- nobody was trashed from it right i mean it was tough by the end it went way better though yeah but way it wasn't better. like everybody overpaced it no right? i mean so it was like just a matter of like calibrating to that work yeah. and like figuring it out yeah the first time the calories went from 20 to 18 to 16 to 14 <laughs> a long like, half hour when you do that's it that not way. supposed to have that's not how it goes <laughs> So, yeah, that's been fun. Yeah, and the other thing that we've done a lot is, or maybe not a lot, but more than other affiliates, which is probably zero, is, like, just prescribing, like, efforts on stuff. Like, 
like Thursdays, again, we're, we're not really doing like a recovery based day, so to speak, where we're not like, you know, doing, you know, stretching and breath work and calling it a day. Like we're actually right. writing programming on that day. Yeah. So I think it's good. I mean, giving them, so it's a 60% day and you know, yeah. that's, that should be your effort for the day. Yeah. But, and then it's like, okay, you, you see this, you know, four or five minute AMRAPs with five minutes of rest in between on like a, an erg active recovery. And it's like lower eccentric movements that are pretty easy for the average person, like box step ups and, you know, farmer's carries at a moderate weight or something, right? Mm -hmm. And like erg. So it's like, it's not going to leave you super trash. And then you can actually moderate your intensity on something like that, where it's not super high power output, where you can go 60% if you want to. And it's like, hey, if you've only been here like twice this week and that's yeah. all you're going to get, like, hey, go for it. Yeah. Like, and people are pretty good about that, I think. I mean, I th thought that I would get more pushback on that sort of thing where it's like, really coach, like 60% effort, like I want to go hard. But I think people get it that like, Oh, I have permission not to go super hard, and this isn't yeah. going to be record scored today, and that means that tomorrow, I better, I better come ready to go. Yeah, and it's nice to kind of take that pressure off where you're not putting a score on the board. You know, even though they're not, you know, high competitive people, they still know that it's going up there, and everyone's going to see it. And the 5:30 p.m. class looks at it and sees what they did, and it's like the pressure's off. And like you said, they have permission to go at a pace that they feel is appropriate for the day. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think just giving people opportunities to be smart. <laughs> yeah. Frankly, like don't don't come in every day and crush yourself. No. Yeah. You can't. And I think I think that is something that's top down. Like when they see when they see the people that they look up to, like other athletes in here and they're not crushing themselves every single day. Like, yeah, they work hard. Yeah, they do, you know, go hard sometimes in workouts and like go there. But then there's other times where it's like Oh yeah, they just saw them like spinning on the bike for twenty minutes easy and doing some stretching and breath work, and they went home for that day. And it's like, I think being in an environment where you do see that, and you see that in other sports all the time, but like in CrossFit, in the early days, like that wasn't what you saw. So I think yeah. having a little bit more, like it's just a product of the culture that you're in. So I think we're, you know, I think generally we've have a pretty good balanced approach to things in that regard, at least. Do you get any inspiration from other um, programmers, or is this just all Ben Wise, the science guy? <laughs> Putting that I don't on the think shirt. I've Putting ever that had on the shirt. Original thought. I mean, that's that's the case for everything. Like, yeah, that's I mean, you had I to get it from somewhere, like, right? I, I mean, yeah, it's like. But is there any like one particular style of programming that really kind of stuck for you, or? Honestly, no. I mean, like I have people that I keep track of and even like other blogs out there and stuff like I'll I'll look at their stuff like revisit it see how they're doing things and see how it's like a different approach to what we're doing like oh I'm always curious to see what other affiliates are programming like when you go back like down to Florida and go yeah. on vacation and like drop in somewhere I'm like always curious to see what the workout of the day is and like uh, maybe Five years ago, I definitely was more like, I would see something and be a little bit more like reactive to it in the sense that like, like, <laughs> like right now, I just recorded a podcast on like zone two training <laughs> and, and not just about that. It was kind of like a, kind of a, a joke because like everyone's talking about zone two right now, I feel like. Mm -hmm. And it's like, so I talked about heart rate training, but uh, like, it'd be really easy to be like, look at the media that's going out right now and be like, oh all my athletes are doing like minimum three hours zone two every week. And it's like, is that necessary? I'm dude? really like, glad you didn't do that with no, the ice baths. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but like, that's the kind of stuff like, yeah. like I, one of the, one of the episodes on the fitness movement, I forget which one it was. It was like, I did one on like heat, cold thermoregulation. Mm -hmm. And part of that, I talked about like cold exposure and some other stuff. And it was like, even then it was starting to be really hyped up, but like now all these companies are targeting like, you know, the, the cold immersion Yeah, and it's, that stuff's great, but it's at the same time, it's, it's just being hyped up like crazy right now. And it's, yeah. again, you're going to see this go in cycles, like all the fitness, like industry things go in like these waves where sure. it's like, you know, 
30 years ago, if someone went outside in wintertime without a jacket on, you were like, put a jacket on, you're going to get sick. And now it's like everyone on Instagram is jumping into a cold plunge. Yeah, ice baths. Yeah. And it's trending now. Do you think like people are just like so much more educated now? It's like to a degree, but you're also being sold something. Sure. It's like, what what are you being sold? It's like that this is going to increase your performance that much. And then it's like, well, it's just really about like where you want to allocate your, your stress to, because like you have limited bandwidth to deal with that kind of thing. So if you're doing 21, 15, nine of thrusters and pull-ups, and then you're going to go jump in your ice bath later on, it's like, you just got limited bandwidth of how much of that kind of thing you can take on in a day without it just yeah. having negative consequences to it. So if you're an athlete and you like getting cold, like that's cold, that's cool. But, uh, like, not going to make the whole gym do it. <laughs> I mean, like there, there are benefits to like, again, there's so many things that like that, that you could incorporate. Like we do bre- like breath work probably once a week yeah. after class, they love even it. if it's like three to four minutes, you know, cadence breathing mm-hmm. where it's like a, an extended exhale and then it's very easy. It's a couple minutes and it's like, we could very easily do that every single day and like make that part of our thing. But it's like, Again, that's not why people are here. They're not here right. to jump into a sauna and a cold plunge and, you know, do wall walk intervals in between. <laughs> like, they're not, that's not why they're here. No. So, I feel, I feel like you, you have to safeguard your, like, if you're a coach, you have to safeguard your population a little bit from whatever trends are going on. I guess that's my point, right? Like, yeah. it'd be very easy to, be like, oh, well, there was wall walks in the last three open, so that's all we're ever going to do. We're never going to do kipping handstand push-ups anymore. It's like probably not a great idea, right? Um, same with like whatever thing, right? Like if I saw, oh, this, this you know, influencer coach is posting like this protocol. Oh, we have to do that as an affiliate because it's, it's just a great idea. It's like I just feel like that's not a very mat- mature perspective to have as someone who's – you know, responsible to other people right. is yeah. to be super reactive and like, oh, this is the new thing and we're gonna jump on it. It's like, okay, there are gonna be new tools that like you can recognize and start to incorporate and like figure out what's appropriate, but mm. you don't need to do that in a way that's experimenting on your athletes or being reactive in a negative sense where it's like, oh, I'm just gonna throw away everything I've been doing for the last decade and go with this. It's like, that's not a mature approach at all. Yeah, I think people appreciate consistency. You know, they wanna know what, the, if, if they're used to some, you know, they don't want, you know, repetitiveness to where it's like beaten to the ground, but I think they want to know what they're going to get, you know, they're the same style, um, good results, progress, um, which kind of makes, what do, so what do you think about gyms that use online programs? Yeah, I don't, they can do whatever they want. How's come you've never done that? You just like to write it all? Yeah. I mean, I, I like, I, I mean, like it's, our it's gym g- having our feel. Yeah, it's got to be time consuming. So, I mean, yeah. I think that a lot, I've heard a lot of people actually say, like, they respect that you actually take the time to come up with a really thought out, calculated cycle every time. So, yeah. and that's why. Yeah. People appreciate it. They do. They appreciate it. It gets good results. And I know our population, in our facility, like no one else does. And that could change yeah. down the line. Like, we could have somebody who comes in and they're super gung ho about programming and they want to do it. And, like, provided they would actually would do it correctly and be the right person for it. And, you know, I want to give it up. I was going to say, would you be able to give it up? <laughs> I can't believe that you would give it up. <laughs> Not in the immediate future, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're like, but my point is like, you know, why did I, me and my dad make a mural on the wall or out? Yeah. On the wall out there. It's like, cause it was there and I could do it. Mm-hmm. Like, why not? It gives a cool, like, flavor yeah. to the gym. It like, makes us who we are. in and they, like, feel a certain way about it. And it's yeah. like, it's the same thing with programming. It's like, you walk in and you see the programming written in the same way every time in the same sort of style. Like, okay, it's going to be different every time because you are at a CrossFit gym. You are doing some CrossFit. And it's mm-hmm. like, but at the same time, it's got, like, you know, it's our gym. We have yeah. our, you know spice on it people are learning to speak ben they know what things mean now <laughs> like stacy what does that what's rpe 
<laughs> and that's, it's that's like, one of the few things I don't actually like. I, I still abbreviate and don't write out. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm trying to remember some of the other ones, but they're like, what exactly does that mean? Yeah, people get really <laughs> confused about like, okay, so it's three sets, but it's an AMRAP, and then the rest is in between. So. This week it was AMRAP minus two. So AMRAP dash two. So as many reps as possible, we're only doing two pull-ups. No, as many reps as possible minus two. Yeah. So teaching them that has been a lot of fun. Teaching yeah. them Ben. That's like really simple <laughs> stuff, but like. It's simple to you because. I do try to. You, that's true. Because you know it, you know, yeah. to the to the average gym goer or to like a, I mean, we've got people who've never gone to the gym, period. So we're, we're their first ones. Yeah. So they're like, what does rate of perceived exertion mean? Yeah. And, and usually, like, when I do bring them up to the board with something like that, I do try to explain it a little bit. Like, not to the extent where I bore the veterans in class, but, sure. like, especially if I know somebody who's relatively new, it's like, hey, that's – I might not even say, like, rating a perceived exertion. I'd be like, RPE scale, that's, like, sort of like a, a scale of, like, 1 to 10. So 7 would be, like, a 70% effort. So we're looking at maybe 70 to 80% today as mm -hmm. your top set or whatever. Yeah. Um, and that way it kind of can layer in some education with also explaining like what the, what the heck's this thing on the yeah. board. And they, they feel like they learn something almost every week. They're like, oh, I didn't, I didn't realize that. That's pretty cool that we can measure it that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's, there are, like, I try to remove at least some of that language. Like <laughs> my individual design clients like to get a way more, like, <laughs> The number of abbreviations of stuff that I use in like yeah, that program is way key. different. There's a key for abbreviations. Yeah, there's a whole tab. <laughs> but but uh, <laughs> like, you know, as simple as it is, like I'll write out every three minutes, time six sets, four squats with a three second lower, mm -hmm. right? Like, yeah. okay, the person might have to think about it for a second and kind of process what that means, but like you can piece it together. Where if it was like, you know, <laughs> FS parentheses six by, or yeah, like, you know, six by four at four oh x one, they'd be like, I I have no clue. Where oh, the tempo, explaining this. the tempo, it was it blew their minds. So the last one isn't about class, but I've always been kind of curious. How hard is it to program for yourself? I mean, I've been doing that basically since like high school, on and off. Maybe even earlier than that. I just feel like it would be really easy to fall into the whole. Well, I'm really good at these, so this is what I want to do this week. Or I'm really bad at that, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna program myself that. So. Yeah. I mean, you have to be really disciplined to make yourself kind of do it all, like the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah, I mean, there's again, everybody's got like biases, and I'm sure this is like there's biases that come out in my individual design athletes that I see as a coach, and I like try to course correct for stuff like. Like, oh, I see that, you know, a lot of people are, you know, dealing with near knee irritation by the time they get to the point where they're ready to compete or something like in, you know, a quarterfinals prep cycle. It's like, if that's the case, I'm not saying that that was the case, but if it's something like, like if you notice something like that, you kind of have to be like, well, am I not giving enough joint health stuff? Am I giving too much squatting intensity combined with knee flexion stuff in like my conditioning based things like what's going on is that inherent to crossfit and it's like that's sort of a cop-out answer so it's like you got to figure out like what's going on and try to yeah. course correct a little bit like i said and like identify like what biases that you are dealing with and that's sort of a bit of a moving target when like the sport you're preparing for is a moving target but so like my point is like i definitely don't get it right but i don't i don't get it right any of the time like i've never gotten it right for anybody <laughs> I'm really selling it here, aren't Wait I? Wait a second. <laughs> but, like, my point is, like, you never write a perfect program, right? Like, never can you write something where it's, like, this is exactly what the person needed and give them no more and no less. And it was, you, like, you never even – well, first of all, you don't, you can't know that. But also, like, there's always something that you could have done differently. You could have tweaked a little bit to make it, like, ideal. So – it's like, yeah. So you've never, you never have felt like, man, I really, I really nailed that one for this person. Oh, yeah, I felt like that, but it's, I wouldn't say it was like, again, I, I think it'd be super arrogant if I was like, this is exactly what you needed. And 
we did it exactly right. Like, I think there's things that have been like, wow, that progression went really well and you saw great results. But I wouldn't be say that like, oh, that was 100% exactly what you needed and we nailed it 100% of the time. It was like, yeah, I mean, sometimes it's like, you just saw good results on that. And like, we'll continue to use that sort of thing. Like, for example, it was like, <laughs> Stacy responds really well to uh, getting some extra pushing and pulling, like accessory type stuff in more of a CrossFit setting because you enjoy that. And then you also get a sick pump and some really good benefits <laughs> from that. Right. And it's like, okay, that's good to know and super yes. useful. And like, we've, we've used that in the past and we saw good results. So we'll probably use that in the future again. Mm -hmm. But that's not to say that, like, I got it just right. So I guess that's, like, my long-winded way of saying, like, I don't think I get it right for myself all the time. But, like, you don't have to get it perfect. Like, yeah, I, don't, fair. I don't think I'm, like, I don't know. Like, I, I, I guess people are just, like, not super, like, if, if anything, I would probably get to the point where, like, I'm doing like too much of the stuff that I'm not bad at where I'm just like not responding to it as mu as well as maybe I could be <laughs> like, okay, if squatting three times a week is good is four better, right? Like you have to draw the line somewhere yeah. on that sort of stuff. So it's like, you know, if 25 minutes of handstand walk skill work is great, then why not an hour before I do my push jerks? And it's like, well, my triceps feel like baby triceps. Yeah. By the time I try to do my next thing and it's like, well, that's not productive anymore. So I definitely don't have it figured out, but I think, I don't know, I just try to be objective with myself like I try to be with my athletes. Nice. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> I think that's all I have, Ben. All right. Well, if people got follow-up questions or stuff, we can always uh, revisit this down the line. Or we could uh, we could always get more specific as well, if that'd be helpful. Like... Mm -hmm. uh, pull up specific examples from class and like walk through them. Uh, but yeah, thanks for, thanks for hosting. Absolutely. Thanks for letting me grill you. Thanks for listening today. If you're someone who just started listening to the show, I would encourage you to subscribe so you can stay up to date. If you're someone who's been listening for a while, I would encourage you to rate and review the show. And lastly, the best thing that you can do to support our work is also the best thing that you can do for your performance. And that is by hiring one of our coaches. Until next time, stay the course.